Good morning and welcome to WWDC. Our new release is iOS 14. Let's dig in starting with the home screen. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. You can see that all of my apps are automatically organized here. So I can tap into a category like Apple Arcade and see all of my apps in that category. Let's turn to widgets. So let's swipe over to Today View and take a look at our new widgets. They're just beautiful. They now come in a variety of sizes. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget and I can drag it out of Today View and onto my home screen. The gallery is a great place to explore widgets. Now, when I tap on one, I can actually page through all of the different sizes available. With the Smart Stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. So in the morning, I can get my news briefing. Throughout the day, find out when I have a meeting coming up. We're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. Now check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. We've completely redesigned the Siri experience. If you say, open Safari, Siri pops up at the bottom of the screen and instantly launches the app. Or if you ask for information, like the weather, results appear at the top of the screen, just like a notification. Communicating with someone in another language, Siri can help with translations. We're introducing a new app called Translate, and it can work completely offline. You can translate your text and voice between any combination of these 11 languages. Just tap on the microphone and say, what are your store hours? ¿Cuáles son las horas de su tienda? And just turn the phone to landscape to open conversation mode with just a single microphone button because the app intelligently detects the language spoken and shows translation on the correct side of the screen. We are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. And you can see messages as they come in with a beautiful animation on the pin. When you're talking to a group, sometimes there's so much going on, it can be hard to keep track of the conversation. First, we're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation, or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. We're introducing mentions. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. We're adding a dedicated cycling option to Maps, which allows users to ride their bike along bike lanes, paths, and roads. Maps takes elevation into account to let you know if you're in for a challenging uphill workout or a leisurely flat ride. With iOS 14, we're bringing cycling to New York City, LA, the San Francisco Bay Area, along with a number of cities in China, like Shanghai and Beijing. On to CarPlay. We have new wallpaper options, perfect for the car. And we're adding support for new categories of CarPlay apps, parking, EV charging, and quick food ordering. I'm excited to introduce a digital version of Car Keys. Now you can leave your keys at home and unlock and start your car with your iPhone. It uses NFC and you just tap to unlock. And I place my phone on the charging pad and then push to start. Digital keys have security benefits. They live in the secure element of your iPhone. And if it goes missing, you can turn off your keys remotely via iCloud. They're even easier to share than a physical key. Copies don't involve trips to the dealership. And you can share from wherever you are with iMessage. Let's give Craig a key so he can drive home after we're done here. Today, no matter what you want to do, there's an app for that. But what if you don't have the app you need right when you need it? Like when you need to pay for parking? Well, now there's an app clip for that. An app clip is a small part of an app. It's light and fast and easy to discover. They start with this card, which quickly pops up. And with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. You don't need to enter credit card numbers because app clips can use Apple Pay for payments. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple designed app clip code. So when you see one, you'll know that there's an app clip waiting for you. And our new release, iPad OS 14. The first thing that you'll notice are the same redesigned widgets that you saw in iOS 14. And this year we're making it even easier to browse and organize your photos with an all new sidebar. 
With just a tap of this button, I can reveal the sidebar with all the core functionality of the app in a single location. There's more, starting with Siri. Results appear at the bottom right corner, allowing you to easily reference the app while using Siri. Today, when you receive a call on iPad, you see this. Wouldn't it be nicer if instead you saw this? Well, that's much better. Now an incoming call is presented with a compact notification that doesn't take you out of context. And you can simply tap to answer or flick it away to dismiss. We've redesigned search with a new compact design. You can start a search from anywhere, like the home screen or over any app. We've rebuilt search from the ground up to be universal. You just start typing a few characters and you can instantly get to where you're going. I'm really excited to show you some of the great new features that we have for Apple Pencil and iPad OS this year. When I draw a simple shape and pause at the end, it'll automatically convert to that ideal shape. So we've also made huge improvements to our handwriting recognition. I can double tap to select a word or double tap again to select a line. I can easily change the color or move it around the document. Using Scribble, I can just write directly into the text field and it automatically gets converted to type text. It also works in any text field, so I can easily add a new reminder to my shared reminders list with my husband. We have some amazing updates coming to AirPods. Let's say you just finished listening to a podcast and you pick up your iPad to watch a show. AirPods will magically switch over, and later you start a video conference on your Mac. AirPods will automatically switch again. You know the experience of being in a movie theater with a state-of-the-art surround sound system? By applying directional audio filters and subtly adjusting the frequencies each ear receives, we can place sounds virtually anywhere in space, creating an immersive surround sound experience. We constantly compare the motion data from your head and your screen to understand how they're moving in relation to each other. So if your bus turns the corner, or your plane banks, the sound stays in sync. Spatial audio for AirPods Pro will work with content encoded in 5.1, 7.1, and even Dolby Atmos. In watchOS 7, developers can enable multiple complications, making even more richly personal watch faces. And configuring watch faces has been redesigned so you can easily select which information you'd like to see. So we're introducing face sharing. You'll be able to discover curated faces with third-party apps on the App Store, or discover a new favorite watch face right on a website, or receive watch faces directly from friends and family. And now in watchOS, just like in iOS 14, you can get cycling directions. You can preview travel time and elevation changes and navigate with turn-by-turn -turn directions that are large and easy to read. One of the most requested features for Apple Watch, tracking your sleep. For most of us, setting a goal is easy, but getting to bed on time, that's the hard part. We are offering wind down. In the evening ahead of your bedtime, your phone can display the wind down screen to help you transition mentally before you go to bed. You can also set up shortcuts for simple things you may like to do to help you prepare for bed. Once it's time for bed, your screen will dim and your watch will go into sleep mode, which looks like this. The screen will be off during time in bed, so it won't bother you. You have a selection of gentle and effective alarm sounds or a silent taptic only wake up alarm so you don't disturb your partner. Once you're up, you'll see a friendly greeting easing you into the day. Apple Watch tracks your sleep using a machine learning model that senses your motion and even interprets the micro movements caused by the rise and fall of your breath, providing signals for when you're awake and when you're asleep. There's an updated sleep section in the health app, including a view of your trends over time. Sleep schedules, wind down, and sleep mode are also available on iPhone without a watch in iOS 14. In watchOS 7, Apple Watch is the first watch to deliver automatic detection when you start washing your hands and sensing of how long you actually wash. When you start washing your hands and sensing of how long you actually wash. You'll see a countdown along with haptics and sounds to make sure you wash as long as you're supposed to. Wouldn't it be great to even more quickly and easily see a summary of an app's privacy practices before you download it? We're going to require each developer to self-report their practices. We're going to put this information on product pages in the App Store. So for each app, you can see highlights of their privacy information before you download it. With HomeKit Secure Video, your cameras are completely private. And in iOS 14, we're making your cameras work even harder for you. 
you'll be able to define activity zones that focus on the most important areas. This is great if you face a busy sidewalk and only want to be alerted when people actually walk up to your front door. Another powerful feature we're bringing to cameras is face recognition. HomeKit cameras and video doorbells will now provide even richer notifications, telling you who's there by leveraging the friends and family you've already tagged in your photos app. And face recognition extends to HomePod, announcing who's at the door. And with Apple TV, you'll get a live view whenever someone rings the bell. All your HomeKit enabled cameras will be directly integrated with tvOS 14, so you can quickly bring them up in the new Home View and Control Center. Our next release of macOS is macOS Big Sur. macOS Big Sur introduces an entirely new design and major updates to some of the most essential apps on the platform. This OS reflects an important history. It's familiar, but it's also entirely new in every detail. Let's take a look at the Finder. You'll notice it has a gorgeous new top-to-bottom design for the sidebar and it has a compact, space-efficient toolbar. We've also updated the menu bar. It's now translucent and elegantly takes on the color of your desktop picture. We've brought Control Center to the Mac. I could change display brightness here, or I can click to dive in for more. Now, we've also reinvented Notification Center. You can access it by clicking on the time in the upper right. And as you see, we now have a single view that brings your notifications and widgets together and we're bringing our redesigned widgets to the Mac. Next, Safari. So now users can click on the privacy report button in the toolbar when they visit a site to better understand how that site is treating their privacy. Safari now also securely monitors your saved passwords to ensure that they haven't been compromised in a data breach. We're adding support for the Web Extensions API so developers can easily bring over extensions that they built for other browsers. You can just hover over tabs and see a nice, preview of the page. Safari has detected that this is not my primary language, and it's added the translation icon to the Smart Search field. I can click here, and let's translate this page to English. It'll happen in line. Today is going to be a truly historic day for the Mac, because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. At Apple, integrating hardware and software is fundamental to everything we do. That's what makes our products so great. We've been building and refining our app in Silicon for over a decade. The result is a scalable architecture that is custom designed for Apple products, and it leads the industry in features and performance per watt. And now we're bringing all of that expertise and that same focus and disciplined approach to the Mac. Our plan is to give the Mac a much higher level of performance while at the same time consuming less power. Our scalable architecture includes many custom technologies that when integrated with our software will bring even more innovation to the Mac. With our advanced power management, we will maximize performance and battery life better than ever before. Our high performance GPU is going to bring a whole new level of graphics performance to every Mac, making them even better for pro applications and really great for games. First, we're designing a family of SOCs specifically for the Mac product line. This will give the Mac a unique set of features and incredible performance. And third, we'll have a common architecture across all of our product lines, making it far easier for developers to write and optimize software for the entire Apple ecosystem. So of course, when we updated our apps for Big Sur, we built everything as native for Apple Silicon. And I'm happy to say we have all of our own Apple apps, including our most demanding pro apps like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, up and running as native now, and they'll be ready for customers on day one. We're using Xcode just like all our developers will. Everything developers need to build apps for these new chips is built into the new version of Xcode. To get started, developers just open their app projects and recompile. And to deliver these apps, we've created Universal 2. It's a new type of universal binary that works on both Intel-based Macs and Macs built on Apple Silicon. And what you see here is that we are running on our Apple development platform. This is a system built to support early development using the same A12Z processor currently shipping in iPad Pro. This is the same Mac that Beth and I used to demo all the new Big Sur features earlier. Of course, a big part of the Mac experience is third-party apps. And we've been working with our friends at Microsoft, and they already have Office up and running natively on our new Macs. Let's take a look at Word. It runs great. 
Scrolling is super smooth. Everything you do is just super responsive. We've also been working closely with our friends at Adobe to bring creative cloud to our new Macs. Here's Lightroom running native on Apple Silicon. Navigating large libraries of DNG images is super fast. Let me show you the app I know many of you want to see, Photoshop. Here's a five gigabyte Photoshop file by photographer Stephen Wilkes. Now, this is a heavy duty document with lots of layers. Now, let's add one more bird in there. Let's check out how smooth the animation is as I zoom out. Final Cut fully exploits the system's multi-core architecture to let us play back not just one or two, but three streams of full resolution 4K ProRes, all on an A12Z processor. The shared architecture across our products means that their code will absolutely sing on our new Macs. We want to make sure that users can run all of their apps on day one, even if some apps haven't yet been updated. Mac OS Big Sur will include a new version of Rosetta, Rosetta 2. Rosetta 2 automatically translates your existing Mac apps so they work on new Macs with Apple Silicon. And this time, Rosetta is even faster, more powerful, and more compatible. It translates the apps when you install them so they can launch immediately and be instantly responsive. And Rosetta 2 can also translate code on the fly when needed, like for web browsers with just-in-time JavaScript compilers or for Java code. Rosetta 2 is transparent to users and the performance is amazing. We're also introducing new virtualization technologies in macOS Big Sur. So for developers who want to run other environments like Linux or tools like Docker, we have you covered. When you put all of these technologies together, Universal, Rosetta, and virtualization, you have a system that can run an amazing diversity of apps. Let's take a look at some existing apps running under Rosetta. This is Maya, the powerful animation and modeling software running great here on Apple Silicon. I already have a model open that consists of over 6 million polygons. And as you can see, I can fluidly move around in this scene. So let's make it a little more challenging and bring in textures and shaders as well. And still, everything is incredibly fluid. But Rosetta isn't just for apps. It also works amazingly well with games. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a high-end AAA game that's using our Metal APIs. I downloaded it directly from the Mac App Store, so it's completely unmodified. And it is absolutely beautiful. And as I follow the path, you can see the game is responsive, it's smooth, and the best part is we are running it at 1080p as a translated app under emulation. So these new Macs, they are fast. Now I want to show you one more type of app to run on these new Macs that we haven't even told you about yet, and that is iPhone and iPad apps. Since they've been built to run on the same Apple Silicon that we're using in our new Macs, they will run natively, completely unmodified on the new Macs as well. This here is one of my favorite games. Monument Valley 2. It's fun to play here on the new Mac. And if I want to catch up on my guitar lessons, I can use Fender Play. Macs built with Apple Silicon will be able to run iPhone and iPad apps directly. Starting day one, users can download these apps right from the Mac App Store. And most apps will just work with no changes from the developer. The vast majority of Mac apps can be recompiled as universal in a few days. We're launching a quick start program. The focus of the Quick Start program is to enable developers to make their apps universal and take advantage of all the capabilities of Apple Silicon. This program also includes new developer transition kit hardware, so developers can get going even before we ship production systems. The DTK hardware takes the form of a Mac Mini, but one with an A12Z SoC inside. It has desktop specs, including 16 gigabytes of memory. We will be shipping units out starting this week, so you can get to work. So what's the timeline for this transition? We expect to ship our first Mac with Apple Silicon by the end of this year, and we expect the transition to take about two years. We plan to continue to support and release new versions of Mac OS for Intel-based Macs for years to come. Our OS releases will be available as developer betas today, and each of them will have a public beta, including watchOS for the very first time starting next month. And all of this great software will be available to our customers this fall.